I have with me here Rufaro. I'm saying that right, correct? Mm -hmm. Rufaro. She is an international student here in the U.S. She's currently doing her master's in financial analytics. And, you know, she's been able to secure the bag, quote unquote, in different, <laughs> different ways. She's landed offers in different, <laughs> different companies <Okay>. and... <laughs> different companies and I just wanted to bring her on here to share with you guys some of her strategies how she was able to navigate you know the job finding a job here in the U.S. because let me tell you it's not easy <laughs> to find a job as an international student but she was able to beat the odds and land offers from different companies so without further ado Let's give it up for Rafaro Chirewa. Thank right? you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, girl. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, super excited to be on your channel. I've been watching you do your thing for a minute with all your videos on tips. I remember you did. I watched some um, like a while back when I see the channel on like just the visa interview, some on. I think we did one on don't study. Was it like engineering or something? And oh, we just, yeah, like, yeah. Really... The one about, <laughs> oh, yeah, the one about aeronautical engineering. The one where when I came in, I wanted to study aeronautical engineering at first. And then I found out how hard it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was control yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, you have some cool content going on. So I'm stoked to be on this channel. Uh, but yeah, uh, my name is Rafaro. I did my undergraduate degree in finance. So did in 2016, uh, graduated 2019. So when I came, I came as a student athlete. I played tennis at my university. Uh -huh. And then, um, of course, I did other things on campus. So like, I, of course, I played tennis. I also did other like organizations. So if any of you have heard of like NABA, I was a NABA, I was a president for one of the years there. Um, and then, you know, like Prevela as well. I was also just interested in professional development, career development, and I also just loved writing. And then I became a LinkedIn campus um, editor. So just did stuff like that. And then there's a little ebook um, for students who are trying to get an internship and stuff like that. So I'll give you the link and hopefully you can link it so people can download and read it. Um, yes. Because I've oh, always just... Description box. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, because I've always just been interested in stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I graduated, I got an, a, an offer at EY. So actually, I'd interned the, the year before. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked last year as a, consul a consultant. So I was a financial services consultant. I worked like my clients were large investment banks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then so I did that last year. And then I got the opportunity to do my master's degree. And I was like, you can't run away from free money and you can't run away from pursuing your education. I'm like, no, let's do it. So, Wait, so, I'm doing my funded? so it's a partial scholarship. And then, so what I did was I had the partial scholarship in that school and then I got another scholarship and then it just, you know, covered. Oh. So um, I got that and I'm doing my master's in financial analytics and... I also have a YouTube channel, so definitely take a look at it. I'll hopefully she'll link it in there through far and see. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> going to <laughs> I'm going to leave your uh, all your links in the description box below. So guys, if you want to check out Rafaro, but on LinkedIn, um on and on her YouTube channel and also get her ebook. I'm also gonna leave all of those links in the description box below. So make sure to check it out. So Rafaro, you said mm -hmm. a bunch of things for just now. So let's, you know roll it back a bit <laughs> so how were you able to land your first internship hmm. uh that's a question with so many things and so many bits to it okay so it's a good question this makes me think on the journey so the journey for me even learning about internships right so in my ebook I talked about my first encounter really even knowing what an internship was mm -hmm. was i was walking down the hallway and this one lady who turned, who ended up being my mentor was this one girl. And she stopped me, she was like, wait, wait, um, where are you going? And I was like rushing, coming from tennis practice. And she's like, oh, have you heard of this organization called NAVA? And I'm like, no, she's like, do you want to join? I'm like, uh. and she's like, what's a GPA? And so I was like, 4.0. This is after like my first semester. She's like, oh girl, 
you need to join Girl, this organization. You won't climb. This. <laughs> she's like, you need to join this, this. You get internships. So I'm like, okay. So I just went, went for the first conference and learned, oh, okay, these are internships. But then the reality of being um, an international student and the reality of being at a small school like hit me in the face. It's like, you know, when they say a truck like slams into a wall, it hit me in the face at that conference. I remember crying the first night because I'm like, I've done everything I thought I should, like have good grades. I participate at school. I'm an athlete, you know, doing all these things, but like ain't nobody here trying to hire me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so that was the journey in me realizing, okay, I have to do something more. And I was going for more and more and more conferences and still I tried it's okay. I need to be doing something else. Mm -hmm. And so I, the one summer I I thought I would have an internship secured. I didn't have one. I was like, you know what? Let me just write. And I was just writing my thoughts, venting, venting. Started being active on LinkedIn. Started connecting with with so many people. On LinkedIn is where we also connected, right? And Uh just sharing my journey, sharing how I was getting rejected here and this and this and this and networking with people. Asking someone for advice. And then realize, oh gosh, like there's a community of, people who are going through the same thing and not alone Mm -hmm. and so what I ended up doing I remember the one um it was a holiday and I was on LinkedIn and I just was like you know what they say um what they say silent mouths don't get fed yeah I was like you know what keeping quiet is not gonna get me this job so Mm -hmm. I went on LinkedIn I started I drafted a little message right and I was like, okay. So I just went on the search bar and I looked up um, a, a few people, right, who had like African names because I'm African. So I think, okay, you know, they might want to help out a fellow sister, you know. And then I literally was typing up, let's say if I type up someone's name and I'll send them this message. Oh, do you mind taking a look at my resume? Oh, do you mind referring me at your company? Oh, do you mind this? And I dealt with so many people. Mm-hmm. And then through that, I was able to build mentors right? Well, it's like, let me help you. Mm -hmm. Well, like, oh yeah, let me refer you. Mm -hmm. Actually, my first, the first time I interviewed at EA was through this method. I didn't get accepted the first time, but Mm -hmm. I had to use another strategy again to then get, you know, seen again and selected again. Uh So it was literally just stepping outside of the box, trying to figure out, okay, I'm applying, applying, applying to the regular portal and I keep getting rejections. Mm -hmm. Like the one time I was sitting at my computer and I had sent over 200 applications. I'm like, this cannot be it. Yeah. Clearly, I'm tired of we we regret to inform you with this or even no response. I'm like, we have to spice it up. Reaching out to people, going for conferences, networking with people, coffee chats, all that. Like the one summer I flew to New York, I was on my cousin's couch and I was like, I'm gonna go for coffee chats with people in the industry. Like oh, you flew and- <laughs> out of like you paid out of pocket yourself. To just yeah, I mean, I was, all I needed, all I, yeah, all I needed was a flight, right? Mm-hmm. So got a flight ticket to my cousin's. I was there for a week, slept on his couch, and the thing is, I had found conferences that mm-hmm. were in New York at that time. So I went on Eventbrite, found just like typed finance, investments, networking, whatever. Found some conferences, okay. um, and then on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. I reached out to those people I wanted to reach out to. They were okay. like, "Cool, yeah, I'll be there." So I reached out to someone at KPMG, um, mm-hmm. someone at EY. The person mm-hmm. actually, yo, this is, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm going mm-hmm. fourth track. But when I interviewed with EY and I didn't get an, get an offer, uh-huh. the way they do it is you go into the office okay. and then you interview. You do your, So for us, for consulting, it was like three rounds for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm-hmm. And then after you go for lunch with people who've been working at EY for at least a year or two. Okay. So the person was assigned to me for lunch. I'd stayed mm-hmm. in touch with him. So okay. when I flew to New York, I was like, oh, hey, Ali, I will be in New York. Do you mind if we grab coffee? Mm-hmm. And she was like, cool. So that was another way for me to stay in touch with her. And I, when I had coffee with her, I was like, oh, yeah, I've been trying to reach out to the recruiter to apply again, but I haven't heard anything from her. And he's like, okay, it's fine. Send me your resume. And she really helped me push my resume for the second time. You mm-hmm. know, that and other things as well. So I did that, met up with then the conference I went to. Uh-huh. I also met some other cool people there who, you know, grew my network and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So, yeah. That's, that's wonderful. That's really bold. I'm very like <laughs> out there. <laughs> of you. Like, Thank you. I've never thought about like just randomly traveling to let's say New York or Washington or something, 
for a conference. I've never really thought about that or like going for coffee chats. Like that's actually very, I would say, very forward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So no, how, I think oh uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna ask so the from the coffee chats you had and the networking you did at, at in New York at that time, you, apart from the one from EY, were the other like um, did any other like offers come out of those of that effort? Yeah, so okay, it's broad. So from the one conference, I uh, then shared a, a follow up coffee chat with someone I met, who works at Deloitte, mm-hmm. and she had like sent through my my resume and forwarded, and I met someone else as well. Mm-hmm. And then um, I was able to also interview with uh, other companies, like with Barclays, for another one after. Another person I met there was like, oh, yeah, apply through this. Like, it was like a finance track, fast track, finance track or something like that. Uh-huh. So I was like, cool, I applied for that one. Um, the other ones is, were just really just like giving me advice and um, just to grow your network as well. And like telling me, you know, the thing that you're doing great, you're doing great. Just, you know, let me connect you with this person. Or let me look at your resume or, you know, and I think also literally being out there like you're saying like i remember at one of the con- the events it was an snp global event and there were only two like under two students there the rest were working professionals me uh-huh. and this other girl uh-huh. and so of course that was intimidating because uh-huh. you i'm like i i came all the way to new york so i have to talk to people you know uh-huh. so it was definitely intimidating like literally talking to the ceo of snp global he was there you know, you have, I, so it was really like a good experience for me to step out of my shell, um, Mm -hmm. talk with people who, of companies I would want to work for, you know? So I think something I told myself when I was flying back was, and even when I was going to New York was, I'm not going and saying to someone, give me a job. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm going to embrace the full experience and learn and Mm -hmm. do everything that makes me uncomfortable. And I think that's what I gained more and above the trying to get office. Because as soon as I got did that and I felt comfortable in my skin with my, you know, my story, my pitch, all of that, like office started coming in, you know, interviews started coming. Mm. So, yeah. And this was all by networking. So once you mm-hmm. switched your strategy to networking, things started looking different. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And even I look at like when I first came to America on a tennis scholarship, you know, even though I, I in Zimbabwe I played for my country and I traveled for national tournaments and stuff, like still getting a, a really good scholarship because I didn't want my parents to pay anything, right? Mm-hmm. It's still difficult. And yeah. in that as well, it was like the best offers I got were from people I played tournaments with. I was like, oh yeah. And I knew they were abroad right oh. it was someone from a different country I used to play mm-hmm. against I knew they were in college I'm like oh could you tell your coach about me and they're like cool you know that's networking and I was like I've been networking since a long time ago you know yeah. but I think we all network we just don't realize the right. power and the value of networking so yeah that's definitely something I need to like like I network but when I network i I tend to just uh, gather information, but don't really put actionable, how do I put it? Like how you said, oh, can you tell your coach about me? Oh, um, I've been talking to the recruiter. I've been trying to do this. I don't really tell them my my plans per se and things that I'm working on. I just, you know, talk with them, get to know them and gather information about whatever it is we're talking about. And yeah. I don't really put any... Uh, action behind those words. I think, yeah, no, that's a fair point. Something like I would just like challenge you to do is I did this uh, at the beginning of the pandemic because I was like, okay, we're locked down, right? And mm-hmm. I don't want to, of course, networking with, and building a new network is always important. But I'm like, okay, let me take a break from that. Let me go to my current network. I mm-hmm. know I'm not utilizing it enough. So I went on LinkedIn and you can do this as well. Like if you go on LinkedIn, and literally scroll through some of your connections okay. and see what they're up to and mm-hmm. just reach out to them like, hey, you know, um, I see you're doing X, Y, Z. Like I had a friend and I was like, well, okay, let me not say friend. Someone I'd met at a conference, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, they just got their CSA and it's something I've been wanting to do. I don't know if I still want to do it, but it's something I've considered. 
And I was like, oh yeah, let me um, reach out to them, see how they did it, right? And they had recently gotten married and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I want to know how, and they had moved to another country to work at like a private equity firm. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, you know, let's, I know we met at this conference and we haven't um, talked in a minute. I'd love to just see what you're doing. So you just got your CFA. I'm interested in taking that. Let's connect. And those are small key things you can mm -hmm. touch base on. And I think we, there's the ne current network we have right now is valuable. Like we just need to utilize it as yeah. well. So definitely try to do that. If you say, you know, this week I'm going to reach out to like two people and make sure you do a call with them, reach out to them, then that's a start. And then you can also share, you know, in that conversation, you can also add value. You can also benefit from them. Mm. Okay. Okay. So another thing is, how do you follow up with people? Because I think um, one of the problems many people have is it's not it's not hard to make that first connection. I think where it's uh, most vital is following up and keeping that connection alive. So um, how do you like follow up with people that you network with, recruiters, hiring managers, um, just or just you know people that that work in a certain company that you're looking to get into? How do you keep the connection alive? How do you stay in touch? What are the things that you do to, to you know keep that going? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I remember when I was in college, I used to struggle with this a lot. Sometimes I do as well because I mean. People have lives. We can't, it's the same way you don't want to clean your friends. You know, now this is like someone who's not your friend. You don't want to be too clingy. Yeah. Um, advice I received when I was still in college was uh, on holidays, right? You can always send a message. Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Wishing you the best. Hopefully, you know, if you're doing well, I just wanted to catch up, right? So things like that. Holidays, you can do messages like that. Okay. Um, and I try to intentionally go through my connections and do that because it's hard sometimes to do it, but it literally, all you need is just a few minutes or let's say hours to do that mm -hmm. um, in time that you're going to be scrolling on Instagram, you know? Mm -hmm. Another thing I do, especially with recruiters or with people at companies you're interested in, just to keep them updated, mm -hmm. is let's say you had a call with them, right? And mm -hmm. you didn't get an offer at that company. And they told you, okay, you know, sorry, we, we can't hire you now because you need more experience in Tableau or something, or you need to get more certifications. You're yeah. like, cool. A couple of months later, you've got those certifications. Reach out to them. You know, I wanted to reach out to you. Thank you so much for your advice. Mm -hmm. I was able to get certifications in X, Y, Z, and I've also been doing this. Or just reach out to them like, oh, you know, I just wanted to reach out to you, um, I hope work is going well. I know recruiting season is upon us and you're probably very busy. But I just wanted to give you an update on what I've been working on, what, I've, what you've been up to. Mm -hmm. So keep them updated on things you have been doing so that they can keep you on their radar. Because a lot of the times they say with recruiters, their job is to meet talent. Yeah. That's their job. So yeah, um, and I tell this to people, not to be rude or anything, but at the end of the day, they're talking to so thousands of people, so many people. You know, so you're amongst those people. Yeah. So just the fact that maybe one day you reached out to them again and reminded them of this, like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. And they'll just push you forward again. Mm. You know, that's just another example. Um, and another thing, again, just staying in touch and engaging with the content that they post on social media. Mm. Or I have uh, someone I was working with to, like, um, do a career transition, right? Yeah. And they were able to get a job and everything. And someone they had reached out on LinkedIn said, actually, reach out to me on Instagram because they prefer to talk on Instagram, uh -huh. right? So staying in touch in, in places like that, those are some ways you can really stay um, in touch going forward. But sometimes it is hard. It yeah. is hard. But I think as long as you've made a good connection the first time and maybe uh -huh. a few times after, then you should be fine. Okay. Okay. That's very, that's very helpful. Thank you. So the so after you got your first internship, um, you had only one internship or more than one internship while you were in school. How many internships? Yeah, so I only interned with one company. One. Um, again, because so for me, when I started looking for a job, I started um, maybe beginning like towards the end of my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So when my junior year came. I was like, yeah, I'm going to enter. And then that's when I didn't get any internships. 
And that's when I'd been putting so much effort and work, right? Uh Um, And then when I eventually got um, in my, because I graduated December, so my senior year that summer, that's when I ended up starting to get, you know, to have feedback, to get interviews and stuff like that. And then I just interviewed at EY and went on. Also, it just made sense for me with EY because I felt like I had really built good relationships with the other recruiters. I would really built my community in, in that company. Okay. from interviewing from this and I just also enjoyed the city and stuff so yeah oh okay okay that's good so you got your full-time offer from them too yeah oh okay so with are you are you working and going to school or did you decide to go to school instead of working I'm, I'm yeah a- so I decided okay. to go back to school <laughs> oh, oh so you turned down the offer to go back to school N- no, so I graduated 2019, and then I worked last year, and then I stopped working beginning of January, and then started graduate school full time. Oh, of January. okay, okay, makes yeah. sense. So you only worked for like a year. Oh, yeah, I mean, because, a bit less than a year. Oh, is that because um, are you considered a STEM major? So right now, um, what do you call it? Financial analytics is considered the STEM, STEM yeah. major. Oh, but your yeah. previous degree um, was not considered a STEM major. Yeah, my previous degree was not STEM. So, with so the thing is, when I started working, mm-hmm. I was doing the job I was doing, which was great. Um, along the pr- my team was great. Mm-hmm. Along the process, I realized that probably what I was doing was not exactly for me or exactly my fit, mm-hmm. and I realized, you know what, I'm still young. Okay. Let me explore other places, right? Uh-huh. And then also with the initial, um, you know how when you do your, oh, I'm forgetting the term. The OPT? Or CPT? Yeah, so when I did that, when I did that the first time, I, I was put into like the lottery and I didn't get put the first time. Oh. Then the second time around, oh, they H1 were... They were yeah so okay. they were going to do so I have friends who w- had decided they were going to stay with the firm and they're going to be put maybe in Canada or Germany or whatever right and then the company was like the lottery was happening again because of the pandemic oh. and so at that point already I had made up my mind I was going to graduate school so okay. I was just like I'll just go to graduate school and yeah. like work will always be there and you know I just wanted time to really figure out what exactly I wanted to do and uh-huh. also work on the other things I enjoy. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. So um, now that you are doing a STEM, a STEM major, you have three years yeah. of PT. Yeah, I should have three years. Yeah. Okay. So you got the full-time offer, yeah? And mm-hmm. you worked for a year. Then you got a scholarship for your master's, right? So first of all, mm-hmm. what is, what, how did you pick your master's program was it you know you wanted you said you wanted to explore other things was it something you've been interested in before you somebody introduced you to it like how did you pick your master's program and talk about the scholarship aspect too I think that's something uh, a lot of international students want to know about (laughs) yeah sure so when I was in undergrad even though I like my last semester I was like chilling because I had a, a job but mm-hmm. I also had kept my options open because I was like, if I want to do my master's degree, I could always do that, right? Yeah. So I had heard of, so initially I was looking at going to Columbia or mm-hmm. Bentley if I decided I wanted to go to graduate school. Okay. And so with Columbia, I would said I was going to do economics and at Bentley I was going to do finance with the analytics track. So both of them would be, definitely more analytical since I did not do too many analytical classes in undergrad. So um, for Columbia, I had done, I don't know if you know of the HBCU, um, how was it called? Like fellowship with Columbia um, for HBCUs where basically you get a scholarship and stipend to, um, so first you get selected by Thurgood Marshall, which is the nice bit. So I got selected. Yeah, I know about Thurgood Marshall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got selected to be the, so they, I got selected in the court and then now they're working with us to prepare for Columbia. So I wrote my test score. Oh, wait, if you don't mind, sorry, um, if you don't mind, let me, 
So is the Columbia HBCU um, fellowship or program, is it under TMCF? Are they working with TMCF for that? Yeah. So you yeah, have to get selected by, so you have to be a by TMCF Thurgood scholar. Marshall. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you have to be a TMCF scholar. So for me, at my university, they had never done that before. So my oh. friend had told me and I was like reaching out to people. So I reached out to like the person who was in charge mm-hmm. of the program and they weren't replying me. Then I reached out to the president of Thurgood Marshall and then he reached out to the lady. To like, sorry. But no, the Martinique is not the president. Never mind. <laughs> no, the, what's his name? I don't remember his name, but I emailed him. And then the person you're talking about. Yeah, and then he, like, CC'd the other lady, and then she replied me. So, like, I was really, like, on it, because I'm, like, I don't know if I'm, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to, like, work on, I, I just wanted to keep my options open. Okay. Um, so, did that, and then the next phase is you have to then get accepted into Columbia. So, if you get accepted in, then you, everything is paid for. So, for me, I did not get accepted into Columbia. Mm. And so, I had, and I, I, I wrote my S and everything, but I had very low test scores, um, especially for doing economics. And so I remember I even had like a girl who was mentoring me. So they attached you someone and stuff. And I just, I didn't prepare enough. So like, I I just didn't, I didn't have the expectations. The first time I wrote it, I thought, ah, this would just be like SATs. Ah, and I was like, "Whoa! Like, wh- why? Why is it so hard?" <laughs> but which, 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 which test is that? Um, GRE. Oh, the GRE. Ooh. Yeah. Are you making me scared? No, scared? first I wrote. <laughs> I think first I wrote the GMAT, and okay. then it was like so many. I don't remember. What, yeah, then I wrote the GRE, and like so many words you have to cram because like it's like this. I'm like, whoa! And then the, I, I just yeah, so that didn't go to. And I was like, okay, it's fine. So when I was an undergrad, I also did another program, which is Discover Bentley. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a scholarship I'm under right now at um, Bentley University. So mm-hmm. it's a scholarship for um, for African-American Black students, for um, Latino, and for Native American students. Mm-hmm. And the way this works is you go, you have to be an undergraduate, okay. and you go to, this, to Bentley. Mm-hmm. I think it's like three days. So I had gone in 2019, you toured the campus, Mm-hmm. Um, you literally sit in like two classes, see what it's like, and I just I had a, a good time. Like the cohort I was with, we went with like a few. Literally mm-hmm. from all the people there, I still like I'm in, kind of like in touch with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean not on the daily, but on Instagram, if I see, I'm like I feel like we're family. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed my experience there, and they also had like um ambassadors were assigned to us when the program, and mm-hmm. I'm still friends with literally two of them who were assigned to us. I just I really enjoy that in the community and everything uh-huh. um so then I was like okay you know I've not applying I applied to Columbia and Bentley and I was like I'll see if I get in and I got into Bentley and yeah so how did you hear about all this uh scholarship program <laughs> the Discover Bentley and uh <laughs> Columbia HBCU one how did you hear Girl, let me those? tell you this is networking that in the Discover Bentley I heard it from someone I had reached out to when I was still looking for a job so this uh-huh. was like two years back before yeah. I was 14, 19. And uh-huh. this person at that time had sent me, he's like, oh yeah, you should also just look at this. But he had said it's for accounting. So I was just like, ah, I'm, I'm not fo- trying to focus on accounting. I uh-huh. left it. And then I don't remember um, why. Okay, then I interned. And then um, someone had said they knew him or something like that. Also, this person was from Zimbabwe. And so I'd gone to the chat, right? And I saw the Discover Bentley. I'm like, oh, let me look at this again. So mm-hmm. I looked and I read through it properly and I saw a program that I could potentially pursue. Mm-hmm. And then I wrote a little essay to see if I would accept me for the three-day program and I got accepted. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go, mm-hmm. right? And so I did that. And then for the Columbia one, um, a girl I used to play tennis against. So she was at Preview. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we used to play against each other and I saw she did the program and who was the other person I knew? I forgot who else. And they told me about it. And then I was like, Oh, okay. I guess let me try applying. Oh, okay. That's but, great. Yeah. So that means they're actually like scholarships available for international students. They don't have to pay all the way. You just have to put in the work to send in those applications because scholarship applications can be tedious <laughs> they can be long they ask for different things different essays letters of recommendations and stuff so, um, 
Okay. Oh yeah, no money. Money is definitely there. It's just there's no free money though. That's yeah. the truth. <laughs> but but when you do the, it's like you do the scholarship, you do the application. That could probably take you a couple hours, but mm-hmm. the money you're getting is going to change your life. So mm-hmm. you might want to do it. Yeah, oh, that's good. So you don't have to pay. That means you don't have to pay any like tuition <laughs> fees since you started here because you said you got a scholarship for to study um one play tennis and you also got a scholarship for your masters girl you are yeah you are <laughs> I mean for my masters my my first semester I had to pay for my insurance which I didn't oh, have to okay. pay for an undergrad but mm-hmm. you know this semester I was able to to bypass all that with like trying with getting more money so we'll see next semester I have to you know. <laughs> <laughs> have to work the connect so how do you bypass the insurance and all of that how did you this is a connector we need to know because students no 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 i didn't i didn't buy i didn't bypass the insurance it's just i didn't have scholarships to also cover additional you know things oh, so i was okay. able to get you know yeah also oh, the scholarship now covers it that's what you mean yeah it was able to cover those things yeah okay okay and the other scholarship that you got you said the Discover Bentley was the was a partial scholarship, right? Yeah. And so the other scholarship that you got, how did you get it? So the other scholarship was through NABA. So I don't know if you've heard NABA, so the National Association of Black Accountants. Oh, so they okay. have a national scholarship and uh-huh. I applied for it and um and, and then I got it. Oh, okay. So people you see, joining organizations, <laughs> joining oh, organizations yeah. is the key. CMCF, yeah. NABA. Those organizations mm. are the key here to get scholarship no, that, information mm. and stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, you've gotten offers from companies like EY, I believe. Uh, what other company did you get scholarship from? Maybe not. <laughs> I don't want to say something wrong. What other scho- What other companies did you get uh, uh, offers from? Yeah, I mean there weren't too many, so. Okay. But I got um, from Barclays, I got from EY. Um, I also got from Dow and... Dow? Yeah, so Dow Chemicals. Dow Chemicals? For real? You know, the, you know the thing again, it's like, oh, oh, we didn't really do international. <laughs> Every time I talk to Dow, they say the same thing. I'm like, wait, wait, how did you finish that one? <laughs> wait, what? So, because I know doubt so, myself whenever I come there because I'm international. I'm like now, now they being a lot of companies are being more um like they kick you out at the door. Okay. So before, like there were some where I got to a certain point, and then it was like now you know the offer and everything. I'm like, oh, like is there anything else you need? They're like, oh, we didn't know. I'm like, but I did mention that. They're like, oh, sorry, you know. Or things like that. Okay. Um, but to be honest, by the time that I'd gotten from EY mm-hmm. and I didn't have any problems with like no back and forth, I was just I was tired because recruiting is draining. Yeah. It you know, as you would know, it's so draining. And I was like, I owe it to myself to just take a break. I've put so much work into this. So yeah. Oh, so I wanted to also you your your business you do where you help people with their careers and coaching I wanted to talk more about that in case the listeners or viewers are interested in reaching out to you about that I'm going to talk more about yeah. what you do with that yeah so basically what I do is I um, help people with um, trying to get jobs right so the same process I went through um of trying to navigate the job search, trying to navigate LinkedIn, interviewing right. my resume, all right. that stuff. I help people. Um, I don't do this by myself. So um, I have also, you know, just other people who help me, but right. it's, it, it's really a dream that's through, that just came to life through experiences. Right. And for the same way you see how g- getting a job can literally change your life. You know, it can change your life and your family's life. And that's just the beauty of it. So in the same way, I was able to um, land an internship and the full offer from navigating LinkedIn mm-hmm. is the same way I've been able to help other people do that. So mm-hmm. there was someone I worked with 
mm-hmm. and were literally on a call. They had inter- no, they had applied at this company. They're like, I really, really want to get there. And I was like, you know, showing them strategies. Um, so they'd got in a certain package, you really focus on the LinkedIn, not showing them strategies to do that. And within five minutes, the person had reached back, they're like, Oh yeah, so we saw your application and so we fast tracked it. You know, stuff like that. Wow. Or someone who was tired of applying and applying and applying, they'd lost their job during COVID. I was like, cool, let's work together. Give me um, one month. All I need is three meetings with you. And literally she had gotten, what, four interviews and she got two offers. So it's stuff like that, that basically I, I, you know, enjoy working with people to do. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, So do you have like an Instagram uh, page yeah, so or... yeah yeah so there's an instagram page and a linkedin page a website will be coming out um okay. shortly it's being redone so yeah. the instagram page is gray suit so gray with an e so g-r-e-y s-u-i-t co so gray suit co and the linkedin is gray suit so g-r-e-y space s-u-i-t so definitely follow the pages huh. um and if you have questions, you can like, you know, put a message in there and, you know, we'll reach out to you. Okay. Okay. So guys, don't miss this opportunity. You can hear, you can hear the testimonies from, <laughs> from all the people that have worked with her and have gotten interviews, have gotten offers. If you want that to be your testimony, reach out to her. She's good at what she does. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Thank you. I receive it. So before we round up, I wanted to ask you, what is one if, if there's one thing that you want internationals to know or to mm-hmm. um, if there's one tip you can give to international students who are, you know, uh, job hunting or who are prospective international students, what they can, what the one thing they need to know about job search here? What is that thing for you? What is that one thing? Oh, OK. Uh, that's a very good question. One thing I would say, oh, okay, this is one thing I would say. One thing I would say is with job hunting, Mm -hmm. everyone is the same and be yourself. Well, it's actually two things. So when everyone is the same, especially coming from Africa, Mm -hmm. where um, with corporations or just with, um, with, with the systems there, it's all about hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the boss is there, the manager this is this you know where you don't even see your boss you don't see your managers like that you know Mm -hmm. um and you're always like oh I don't know should I ask should I say this like in America you can't be like that you have to bring your full self and there's an open door policy which is so beautiful so it truly allows you to bring your true authentic self and that's the second thing when you're job searching don't try to change anything about you Mm -hmm. I mean apart from the fact of wanting to learn and be open-minded Mm-hmm. right but don't change your accent don't change or try to hide your background where you're from the things mm-hmm. you enjoy doing that's a part of your story mm-hmm. that, those are things that will be so valuable mm-hmm. when you're searching for the job uh, when people come to me and we do interview coaching and we build uh, your story your personal brand which is the difference literally will be the difference between um, you getting an offer or not getting an offer a lot of the times Okay. That truly comes into play. I always ask people in the questionnaires, where are you from? Mm-hmm. What are your values? What do you like doing? Things like mm-hmm. that, because those will truly make a difference in, mm-hmm. the, in the team seeing if they can work with you. Because that's what interviews are about. It's like a date. Do I like this person? Can mm-hmm. I talk to this person? It's not about when you date someone, you don't see all their skills right you, d- you don't know those they can gain right uh-huh. but you need to see is this person like what what's their story you know what's their background you want to understand all of that and you know it's you, sh- you should just um bring that forward don't try to change that just stay true and authentic and authentic to yourself mm, okay okay that's that's a very yeah. valid point that's very very distinct so what is one strategy um that you think of uh, all international students should adopt when job hunting, especially to save them the stress and uh, um, the time, you know, stress and time and resources to save them all of that. What is one strategy you think that every international student should adopt in their job search process? Yeah, so I won't say this will save you time or stress because 
everyone's journey is different for me uh-huh. my path had to be like that for a reason you know okay. i had to apply to over you know, you know 200 companies get uh-huh. all those rejections i had to go uh-huh. to this conference i had to fly to this place uh-huh. because like i look back i'm like look at the network i have now you know, look at uh-huh. the experiences i have you know uh-huh. um but i would say from what i learned is you need to network uh-huh. if you've applied network if you this network Okay. Network, 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 and everything you're doing. Like when you go to an event, challenge yourself to talk to people you didn't come with. And I do that all the time. Um, you need to do that. You know, like my the fiance and I, whenever we go for events or mixes, uh-huh. yeah, we're a team, but like we know, okay, we're here to meet new people because uh-huh. you don't know what it what you could learn. And it yeah. doesn't even have to be at a professional conference or at a professional job search thing, whatever, mm-hmm. because I kid you not, um, at the time my fiance was, he, had, he was dropping off something for someone. Mm-hmm. He didn't know the person. Okay. And at that time, they were still job searching. And this person's like, oh yeah, um, they just started talking. He's like, oh yeah, um, give me a resume. I can put in the referral. I mean, that didn't go through, but I'm like, you see the beauty of that, right? Mm-hmm. So just network, open your mouth, talk to someone and yeah. So, okay, okay, that's good because they say a close mouth is a close destiny. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, talking, networking with people is very key to especially gaining information. Um, I think having a community of people too, community of internationals, oh, yeah. because I realized that people who are not internationals, they don't really understand the struggle, they don't really understand mm. how different it is for international students. So I think also having a community of international students who can show you what they're doing and what they're not doing so you know what to avoid and what to do to um, a community of international students to help you navigate uh, life, especially here in the U.S., um, also navigate yeah. the job search process and all of that. For me personally, having a community of international students helped me like gain information about like my, um, especially in my school, especially like scholarships and stuff. I was able to like oh, yeah. waivers and stuff from school because um, of the community of international students that I had, you know, talking to different people um, and learning more about what is available to international, international students and what is not. So definitely having a community of international students is helpful. So there you have it, guys. <laughs> um, Yay. Important things to note, networking is key. Um, having a community of international students is also very important. Also, being your full authentic self is important in the job search process. And also, uh, what what the what the first thing you said about the hierarchy and oh yeah, just I don't know what the key what the point was, but basically, like everyone is the same. You know, don't okay. think that oh because this person is the manager and this one is the recruiter and this person I can't talk to them no everyone is the same so basically it also boils down to networking mm. yeah all right guys all right Chira. uh Rafaro. sorry I'm just <laughs> I try not to <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> all right Rafaro. thank it's you been so a long much day for, yeah I'm, I'm not eating all day so <laughs> I'm hungry as I'm saying this <laughs> Girl, go get some food. And well, thank you, Friday. So I, know. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much for um, joining, you know, this meeting. Thank you so much for your time and all the gems you've dropped in this video. Thank you so much for all of that. I, me, myself, I even learned something. I picked up something, even though I've been in the game for a while, but I, I learned something new today. So, I'm really grateful for you coming on here. So leave, make sure to leave those, your questions in the comment section down below. Also check out Rufaro's uh, YouTube page and her Instagram page as well. Make sure to follow her business page for you know, help with your career and all of that. Um, but make sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section down below. We're going to be having an Instagram live. That way we can answer all of the questions. More information on that will be coming soon. Um, so also look out for that watch out for that and yeah be on the lookout all of that 